to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question, come and get some answers, learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the Green Lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax, cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts and allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the nerdiverse welcome to the masters of the nerdiverse podcast where we always have such sites to show you mm. this confectionery treat of a podcast can be found on itunes stitcher spreaker soundcloud youtube iheart radio and google play I'm, of course, your host, Mike G, and with me, as always, is the also host, the uh, Lament, the La Marchand configuration to this Leviathan, Winter Trash Monk the Third. What's up, everybody? This is Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk I I I coming at you live from the Trash Bunker, Trash Monk I I. <sighs> What was with the uh, inaugural beginnings, my man? Oh, I thought, I, well, I accidentally went right into the inaugural and what I meant to do uh, a Christmas <laughs> themed. Uh, oh, you went right into the polls <laughs> of the week. I can, yeah. Oh, no, no, I, I don't know how to do an, any other beat. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We're only human, Doug. So I don't know, because this isn't the Christmas cast, right? Uh, I think next week will be the Christmas cast. Um, this is kind of like a pre-Christmas cast. This is kind of like the office party Christmas cast where we'll have the true Christmas cast come out around Christmas, but we do have some Christmas treats actually that we can, uh, that we're going to be looking into here live on the channel. Yeah. You, almost you just, did not happen because almost did not happen. Mike, you told me that you're the, like, a there was like, you received a package today Yeah, and then I was like, I came home and there was five packages for me. <laughs> and I was like, well, none of them have a particular person's name on it. Yeah. Uh, from. So I figured I didn't get it, for, uh, get what we were talking about. But it turns out we did. I did. Yeah. So um, to destroy the suspense, um, what, actually, from our, um, from uh, the, the master of mysticism himself, um, Austin Ozzy actually sent us to, uh, to gift little gifts and little packages uh that we're gonna open live and see what he sent us over you know see if one of us is brave enough to take the american challenge i guess <laughs> now um there is a little dispute that we had before we started recording okay <laughs> you said that you got a package like a box yeah i got a box and i have a like a a small not box okay so uh, <laughs> apparently we got very different things yes apparently. yes that's what i'm trying i'm not i'm not saying that I, I, i'm just we're just seeing uh where his party lies but. i don't know because <laughs> i'm thinking this is from him because it's 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 labeled mike g and i don't go by mike g anywhere else but this podcast so Mine gonna... goes by my address because of that one day. <laughs> <laughs> the winter snafu. Yes. So. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I think this is from him. I mean, I haven't ordered anything. I have nothing waiting. So you know, we'll see. So you want to just open these bad boys up right now? Yeah. And a five. And a four. And a three. Two. One. one. The sound of box opening. What is this? What? I got a bag too, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nice blue bag. It's all frilly and shit. Dude. It says, I'll read mine first. Hi, Mike. LOL. <laughs> it ain't something I made. I just got your address added. Here's a little gift. Open it during your next podcast if you can before Christmas. Otherwise, enjoy. 
Ozzy Austin. I didn't get a letter. You probably did, man. <laughs> no. I... <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, like, I don't like this uh, favoritism that's going on. No, I there. love it. I, I, I don't know what you got, but I love what I got. I almost want to take a picture of this arrangement, dude. This thing is pretty, though. In fact, I will before, uh, before I, uh, dang it. It's I, like I, Austin knows me about how I would have missed the letter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he almost, it's like he knows me. So I'm going to have to take this picture in the dark because I'm literally sitting in the dark right now. Yeah, I'll take a picture and send it to you for the podcast. I'm, I'll put my uh, my degrees in the background. <laughs> nice. All of your, your fancy degrees. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh wait, my... crap. I can't put this picture because it doxes his full name. So I got I to gotta hide the card. In He's the got a full name. <laughs> He's a man. He's apparently a human. Though. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Let's see how that one come out. <laughs> All right, that came out fine. You, you get to see my room a little bit, but the Nerdiverse will be cool with it. Yeah. Okay, that's of the bag. So, have you opened yours yet? Yeah, you got you got to show uh, send me that pic too. Okay, I'll send it to you. It's it's on my phone, so I'll send it to you after the show. Okay. Do you want to divulge what you got so far, or do you want to yes. wait? Oh, well, I only have I have the one thing, and okay. it's worth it. It is. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Titan Dice. Titan Dice, Doug. What yes. is that? that they cool. are. It is. <laughs> let me read you the background. This is by Wiz Dice, by the way. Wiz Dice. Um, those in the D and D community are drooling right now. Yeah. Um, named for the colossal and primordial gods of old. The gods. Titan Dice are hulking polyhedral giants engraved with mythic runes and Rune. sealed away in an ornate wooden storage box. While most poly sets are on a 16 millimeter standard, which is your standard uh, die set, these 25 standard <laughs> 25. are over twice as large. Well, that's not twice if it's 16 standard 25 okay over twice as large twice as heavy and have twice the impact when you bust them out for your most important rolls <laughs> this sounds like epic dude okay this i got a box within much a box. better than i thought that he was gonna send folks <laughs> yeah i got a box within a box so bear with me as i open my second box yeah get ready to hear this sound folks you hear oh, that? You hear that? That's the sound of a gift. All right, I'm just digging into this. I'm gonna use my man strength to dig into this box because there's no. It's like it's like the lament configuration. There's no opening. What is Do up? Do I box? marry Austin? Yes. Uh, at the twelve. Oh, that's actionable. Uh, it's like this box is not open by hands. It's open by desire. This is good for once my eyesight gets lost after diabetes that I can now read <laughs> read the numbers on these. Yo, it, it's diabetes free. D and D dice. Yeah. Why is it this? Not oh, open? not only that. So this is another thing that I like about dice sets, folks. First, you get the bubble wrap. Yep. You get the bubble wraps. As I as I struggle with this box. Thanks to Austin for the ASMR. Yes, you just unlocked a whole new avenue of listeners, bro. Yes. But the thing is, um, there's some dice sets that I've received in the past. When I bought like a, you can buy like a ton of dice. Yeah. I bought, I think it was like ten bucks for two. Oh. And um, they they'll offer a t one only one d ten, but what you really should have is two d ten, and one of them is the like the. 10, not like 20, 60, 40, 10, you know what I'm saying? And then the Ooh. other one is 0 through 10. I mean, 1 through 10. Does that Dude, make sense? Yeah. I so got... when you roll it, you'll get 28. <laughs> Dude, I got a stainless steel D&D mug. Nice. It's like, it's stainless steel inside. It has the D&D insignia, but it's like, it's like full, it's like full wooden. You hear that? <laughs> That's the sound of a D and D mug. This is wow. coming with me to work tomorrow. Wait, doesn't he work with wood? Yeah, 
It's almost like he created this. I see my reflection in the in the stainless, Doug. Thank you, Austin. You just gave me a new work mug that will make the entire office jellyoso, Doug. Yeah. I'm super hyped. Yeah, I've got to take a picture of this for the channel as well. I got my D and D mug. I'm gonna fill it with a hot toddy later, and I'm gonna listen to Frank Sinatra like a grown yeah. human being. Shout outs to Austin Ozzy for being so generous for giving us an early Christmas gift. Austin is so, so cool, cool, Jack. Jack. <laughs> I love it, man. Fly me to, to my Austin. Moon. He and bought us D and D stuff. Make me a gin and tonic. He's a southern expat. Whoa. Whoa. How's your week? <laughs> uh, it's pretty awesome now. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the idea in my mind that goes like, I'm the kid who uh, is at a birthday party but still needs a gift. Uh, that even though it's not his birthday party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my G. <laughs> so I, I, I really like these dice. They're gonna they're gonna have an important uh, spot on my mantle, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, because funny enough, I have an ongoing gag with a friend of mine where they buy me mugs every Christmas. So I have like seven or eight different mugs from them, and it's yeah. funny that I got a mug uh, uh, from Austin because I have I've been having this ongoing uh, collection of mugs. Like currently, I have the Fallout uh, Pit Boy mug at work right now. Which is way too big. It's like two liters. It's a two liter mug. <laughs> That's like a working pit boy. So this mug will be perfect for in the morning when I need my coffee. So I'm super hype about this. About this gift. This is, dude. Yeah, man. So what else you do with your week, man? Uh, you know, uh, try not to spend any money. I owe the Wells Fargo some money. Money. And <laughs> yeah, you know those overdraft fees. You know what I'm saying. I feel it. Yeah, feel so it. I'm doing there. my best not to buy anything. I should be paid tomorrow. Get, just got paid. Yeah, it's Thursday night. Pop and you know, living living la vida loca. Living what are la, you doing? Living la dolce vita. Oh, I um, uh, uh, I guess I could talk about TV shows right now. Yeah, uh, for my week. Uh, I. Yeah. Was watching episodes of the new CBS hit. Uh, it is um, what's the word? It's awesome. evil. That's what the show is called. Evil. evil. It's pretty much. I I like it. I dig it, but I don't think it's long for this world, folks. Uh, you got you got that feeling. You can smell death on it. Dude. Well, it's because it's uh, it's kind of got the X Files type vibe where there's a believer dude and a not believer woman and they talk about things mm. only to have the religious bent each episode which uh. i think is fascinating kind of it reminds me of like if if paul schrader made a tv show <laughs> type thing nice uh nice. nice so i watched i watched all that and then uh i'm watching a, another show called prodigal son that's on fox that has the guy that plays Jesus in Walking Dead as the main guy. Jesus. And essentially it's about how his father was a serial killer and how now he's become like a FBI profiler solving mysteries for the NYPD. But he's got he's got like baggage that he needs to deal with. Dude. I'm watching that. Watching that. <laughs> and then I'm also starting to watch the AMC show Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Uh, one of my favorite R- jokes. Written in- by Joe Hill. Oh, how is that? How is that? How the hell is that? It is uh, good so far. Like, I like how it keeps me on my toes. I'm trying hard not to read in, read the Wikipedia page, so I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, it's cool. Dude, never, my favorite ongoing joke for for, for uh, Futurama is that um, there's a vampire robot called NOS482. Yeah. That's all I that's all I, that's That's the whole joke, but I love it. If, if I had guts i would get a tattoo of nas for a2 on my arm nice he, nice he, he is the best <laughs> he is quite the best uh what did i do with my week i'm on like a video game hiatus man i'm not playing a lot of games right now just i haven't played i haven't actually booted my switch in a minute a minute 
Uh, yeah. But I've been watching a lot of TV. Uh, I finished Watchmen, and I'm going to talk about Watchmen. You can't stop me. I'm not going to spoil anything, mind you. Yeah, I watched a clip about Lube Man. <laughs> Lube Man is Lube Man is next level, Doug. Lube Man is doesn't te- really have a superpower. Does <laughs> his power is elusivity, Doug? Lube Man is there and gone in two seconds, and you feel just like the character, like what WTF, man. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. look at Mike G. Look at that. I'm trying to be better, man. I'm trying to yeah. be better. You hear that? <laughs> I'm you hear that, Austin? <laughs> Don't call him out. He's going to give you D- Dungeon Master like like, like Typhoid Mary next time you play or something. You leave him alone. He just gifted us beautiful gifts, Doug. You leave him be. Yeah. But I'm more of a Don Rickles type character. Dang. You have a personality of a dead moth. Uh, that's what he told. What's his face in uh, in Screwed? Not Screwed. In Dirty Work with Norm Macdonald. It's one of my favorite movies. Anywho, Watchmen, dude. You need to watch Watchmen so we can do a, a full spoiler cast on it. Uh, it's so good. It's it, give me it's your HBO so uh, account. Good. <laughs> no. Just, just come over. Uh, <laughs> just come by. Dude. Look, we'll just binge watch it all in a day. Yeah, dude, it's mm-hmm. it's damn good, man. It's some, it's the best. Uh, Kate, uh, the thing, and the weird thing about Watchmen is that even as a book, it doesn't feel like a comic book, right? It feels like a crime noir, right? It feels like yeah. this mystery that's unfolding because the heroes aren't really extraordinary; they're just personalities, you know. That they're, they're just different types of archetypes, and this TV show, with all that it has to say doesn't feel like a capes a capes show it at all man it feels like this mystery that's unraveling throughout the episodes and when the capes stuff happen it it grounds it like ridiculously even as you're seeing the fantastic happen and it has a lot to say about a lot of different subjects it makes you think it's it's i'm gonna i want to rewatch it man because i know there's some stuff i missed and I just really want, I can't wait till you watch it. So uh, we need to wa- watch Watchmen, watch the Watchmen so we can talk about that in more detail. But I I just want someone to gush about it, you know, just, just like, yeah, you remember that part when, remember when this happened? What do you think about yeah. that? What do you think about the ending? Like, I just want to just, just regurgitate my thoughts on the, that, that show all over it because uh, it's so damn good. But I'll leave spoilers out because it's real easy to spoil that show. Nice, uh, nice. So I'm going to be generous and not do that. Also watch the Game Awards, which was very <laughs> disappointing this year. <laughs> oh, God, it was awful. Uh, we'll talk about that more in the noose. But it makes me think, like, this is truly the worst time of year to come out with announcements because we're on the cusp of a new generation. So a lot of these companies are holding their cards close to their chest and not divulging anything you know so it's like it's like going to a birthday party and they forgot to bring the cake and everybody's just like oh <laughs> i guess we're just here now you guys like punch like cake better oh no i can't have cake though but um other than that just been watching a bunch of horror movies friday the 13th just passed so every friday the 13th i stop and watch at least two or three friday the 13th movies and that'll be a good segue into our poll of the day now Let's you can do the get. Yeah. yeah. Jingle bells all the way. You ruin everything. Yeah. You're my best dashing, friend. Dashing through the snow. Yeah, with the one oh, rose hope. Say. Yo. You got to do the Beastie Boys version. <laughs> Boy. You got to have the giant clock. Yeah. So recently. Going ho, ho, ho. All the way. <laughs> all the all the way. <laughs> you gotta do your arms. You gotta fold them. All the way. <laughs> you gotta fold them in half like your DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. Dog. So we've been having a lot of ties in the polls lately. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm getting better at this polls thing, <laughs> or I'm making I'm making it harder to decide. <laughs> Maybe I'm actually getting well, better at this. Would you like to be burned by the sun or burned by acid? <laughs> mm. okay. both are both are rough ways to go my man would you like to be friends with nick nolte or mickey Roy? <laughs> dude honestly 
I don't want to hang out with either of those dudes. <laughs> can I just die? <laughs> can I, can I we just have die? a tie. <laughs> we have a tie. Zero to zero. <laughs> zero to zero. Okay. In favor of Nolte. What? So I asked the Nerdiverse, out of these movies, what's the best Friday the 13th film? And your options are the original Friday the 13th from 1980, Jason Goes to Hell, 1993. My birth year. Yeah, get him. Dude, I saw that in I saw that in the movies with my dad in New York when I was a kid. Dude, I'm aging the hell out of myself. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Go Friday on. the 13th, uh, the final chapter, uh-huh. which was 1984. Somebody else's birth year on this podcast. <laughs> um, and Jason X, 2001. Yeah. And we have a three-way tie between Friday the 13th the original Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X, all at 27%, with wow. the final chapter going in at 18%. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Now, I, have... I don't have a bone to pick in this fight uh, just because I haven't watched uh, any of the. Uh, well, I've, I've watched maybe one Friday the 13th movie. Oh, really? Which one was that? Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> that super doesn't count, my man. <laughs> Blasphemy. I can't Suffer. With you. Suffer. I can't with you, man. Yeah, um, I, it was my first time visiting New York with my dad. He took me to Forty Second Street, and there's nothing playing. <laughs> it's like Malcolm X, and like, <laughs> like I don't want to go watch this. Watch this. So, but, but my dad went to DC Comics, the the building. I mean, he took me and got me some comic books, preferably Batman Five Hundred. With the flip cover where it turned from regular Batman to the to the stupid like nineties like edgy Batman. I got that cover in New York. And he uh-huh. took me to go see uh Jason Goes to Hell on forty second street, like right like right next to like Phantom of the Opera was at the was, was like playing at the opera. <laughs> it was so crazy. And we walked out of that movie just confused. <laughs> just like what happened? <laughs> So the black guy was Jason? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's such yeah. a weird movie. But I'm proud of the Nerdiverse for splitting on that. Because those three movies are great and completely different. For completely different reasons. You know what I mean? Where Jason X is just campy dumbness. You know, just sub-zero fatalities. Friday the 13th OG is a, a classic. It's one of the original slashers. And of course, Jason Goes to Hell has Jason getting shot with a with a with a land to air missile. <laughs> he just explodes. <laughs> Have you seen that? It's so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. Like there's a scene right, where, right. where where they're, they're at Crystal Lake and there's this girl taking a shower, like a bigotary like nudity scene. Uh-huh. And Jason goes to kill her and she runs out of the house and we find out that she's like a like a CIA agent and the entire house is surrounded. <laughs> By like cops and helicopters and shit, and, and Jason is like, "What?" <laughs> and they just start raining fire on him. And somebody pulls out like a land to air missile and just explodes him in front of everybody. <laughs> it's so right. stupid. Oh. Would you want a Rob Zombie Jason movie? Nah, Rob Zombie needs to stay away from directing in in general. Hear me out. What if Jason is a g- 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 girl? <laughs> It's just Sherry Moon. It's yeah, exactly. Sherry Moon zombie. It's just for Jason, and Georgina not, Voorhees. And he's not related to anything camp related. He's just like a, a biker woman. <laughs> that makes me so tilted because it's pretty much what he does, man. There's going to be a scene where Jason's walking down a highway in, in, the, in, the, in the bleeding sun because everything has to go back to, cha- to Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, can't with it, man. Right. <laughs> I just want Rob Zombie to put out good music again. How about that? How about he just bring back, you know, Dragula level music, Doug? Run tail day it. How about he do day it? Oh uh, man. Speaking of uh, music, by movies, the way, yeah, I, I I just saw that. This could be why my Twitter was acting weird because someone sent me a message and it was Austin telling me. <laughs> that to look for a package yeah so. <laughs> yeah man he, he the preemptive strike Doug I'm with it man he he caught you at the pass Doug uh, yeah 
Good stuff, man. So you want to get into some news? Yeah, I do have some breaking news coming out right now, real quick, that breaking came out news. about an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, Rooster Teeth news, folks. As you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Funhouse, uh, Cow Chop. I like everything, uh, really, that Rooster Teeth does. If If I had to say, I would work there. I don't know what I would do. Rooster Teeth sponsor this podcast? <laughs> something like that. Or I would, I would, my motif would be like, I always have a bucket of chicken in every video that we play. Okay. We I'm with it. Fried yeah. chicken? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> who eats, <laughs> yeah. Who, who unless, eats it's Pollo, unless it's El Pollo Loco. Oh, jeez. Okay. The, wor- the worst. So uh, I, we covered a while back that Bruce Green uh, left Rooster Teeth. Uh, he was one of the founding members. But as of today, folks, Lauren Sontag, another member of Funhouse, has left Rooster Teeth. What's going on, man? I don't know what's going on. Everybody's leaving at Roos- ship? Well, not just that. Like, Cow Chop is supposedly over. Uh, that channel is going to be gone end of this year. I think this year also we saw the end of Sugar Pine 7, though they're, I think, both. Uh, California, so West Coast Rooster Teeth. So those guys are going to be, although they're gone, and uh, one of them or two of them went to work for Funhouse, and now we're le- missing people from Funhouse. Dude, like, you think this has to do with uh, with Copa and with YouTube just pretty much cannibalizing everybody's channels? The Copa Cabana. Copa Cabana. Uh, no, um, I don't quite know what happened. I mean, Rooster Teeth was purchased by, I think, the AT&T company. Um, don't quote me on that. Don't quote them. Or Viacom. Not Viacom. I'll, I'll look at that in a minute. Viacom. But, yeah. It, they've been making some uh, some changes. There was some cutbacks, I think, in the summer where they got rid of maybe – five percent of their people i don't know again uh do you don't... fear that another that this is going to turn into another machinima well that would, that would be hard because i don't i there's what there's still there's enough business that rooster teeth does that i think it would be surprising to folks to realize that like rooster teeth in the last couple of years started their own podcast network in a sense where other podcasts could join it and for ad revenue and whatnot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, they're, they're exploring other options. I just think that um, the, the era of them trying out any project that they have or whatever might be tightening a little bit. And perhaps other people are wanting to try new things like Lauren Sontag, and Bruce green have different things that they're going to do after this. Yeah. Bruce green went on to streaming and he's successful with that. And uh, Lawrence, I don't quite know yet, um, but he's a quintessential gamer. So he'll do whatever he needs to do. Um, hmm. Yeah. Do, do you think that we're get, we're coming in, we're slowly getting into an age where Twitch killed the YouTube star? Yeah, I mean that that is a possibility. I mean, YouTube has their own streaming service as well, so it's not like. Uh, but people are super fed up with YouTube, man. Like everyone's trying to jump ship to the next thing where they don't feel so shackled, right? You know, that's true. And there's also I can't imagine the production process over at Funhouse because they release some video almost every day, and I think Sunday they release two videos. Yeah. So the every other day, go somewhere, yeah. man. That content's yeah. gotta go somewhere. And it, it, it's uh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, and after doing it a while, they probably just want to try out new things. Fair enough. So, yeah. Yeah. And they're at a comfortable spot, I bet, where they can do that. So, man. kudos to them. Kudos to them. Godspeed. Man. Yeah. I just uh, for some reason, my friend. Uh, that we call El Shaw uh, cons- thinks that I'm I'm like Lauren Sontag, and there are some times where I am like him, but uh, he he's uh, I don't know I don't know it's just interesting interesting I, stuff man yeah okay Mr Sontag is that how you say his name 
Thumbtag, yeah. Thumbtag. I like, so he, they're also connected to inside gaming, of course. Like, um, I believe he was working at Machinima back in the day, along with Adam Green, Bru- Adam Kovic, <laughs> sorry, Adam Kod- Kovic, Bruce Green, and uh, James Willems. Man, I just, I'm now thinking about all those channels that were so big. Like, remember SourceFed? Right. How big SourceFed was at a point? And they just yeah, well, disappeared. Yeah, well, SourceFed, like, uh, one of the people from there was the one that made Trigger Pine 7. So, yep. that's crazy. Small world, huh? Yeah. Man, YouTube is really wrecking a lot of people. Well, you know about the origin of Cow Chop, right? Nah, man. Where it was the creatures, uh, two of the people from the creatures formed Cow Chop, if you know the creatures. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Small, like I said, small world, man. Very small world. Speaking of worlds, let's get into this game awards, man. This video game awards, where there's really only two big things I want to talk about <laughs> that yeah. came out of the game awards. The biggest thing was the was the official announcement of of Microsoft's next console, which is going to be called the Xbox Series X, which is known, which which is already being affectionately called the xbox sex mm. looks impressive they showed uh hellblade 2 which looked damn photorealistic yeah. it looks insane it's time for my blades to go to hell hell <laughs> uh sing you a sacrifice uh hellblade one i hate it's weird the way to say it was an amazing yeah. game and let that be their flagship title to show off the strength of the console and if that was all in game that had to be like a cutscene in game that couldn't have been like real in game you know what i mean like it couldn't have been like i i'm controlling that character doing all that there's no way right maybe i don't know the whole thing as as a sign of the times this console just flat out looks like a, a pc tower which says a lot <laughs> where things are going. Mm-hmm. It looks like you, it literally looks like you could just take off the top of it and just add a video card in there. <laughs> like you can just dump stuff in from the top, dude. It looks like a PC tower, and it's very telling what direction they wanted to go with that. And I'm just and apparently the console itself is just called the Xbox. But there's going to be different series of the console because they want to put out a super beefy version and what they want to put out an affordable downscaled version. So there's probably going to be like a Series S, a Series X, X Plus, you know, that kind of thing. Down the line, yeah. You know, so what are your thoughts on this console, man? Is this something that you see yourself purchasing for well, $499.99? <laughs> No, because for that amount, I could purchase a new video, gr- new graphics card, uh, and probably install a new CPU for that. Um, or actually, one or the other, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I liked how you talked about that. You, it's pretty much a tower. Yeah, uh, it's just like a tower. It's yeah, silly. It's crazy. Yeah, but it's still. It's just hard. I think it's going to be more. It's going to be harder to sell these things once the the uh, the um, the the barrier towards people you buying or playing on PCs gets lower and lower into where it's non-existent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it becomes more of a commonplace. Like you don't know how to change your own graphics card. <laughs> that sort of, that type of thing. Once we get to uh, that stage of like it's like kids are learning how to do that at school, like what what we're going to there, where we have kids learning coding in some schools. Mm-hmm. Where once we get to that point, uh, where it's like it's as easy as plugging in a, f- a head your headphones type ease, that's when it the, they're really going to be in trouble for a console. Yeah, uh, but where eventually the Xbox is just going to be a tower. The thing is. And just to play devil's advocate here a little bit is there's always going to be a market for plug and play. There's always going to be a market for, I just want to push the button when I buy the game and let it run. Every yeah. The one thing against 
PC playing is that you can't just download the game. You got to adjust things and shift things around and make sure your memory is good and make sure that you're running it at the right specs. It takes a day to set up playing the game before you can play the game versus on, let's say, a PS4, you download God of War and it just starts running. You know, there's no there's no flipping the hood and tweaking things. But like you said, those lines are going to blur right the, the deeper we get into the future right uh look at stadia even though it's a trash fire it's a good idea it's a sign of the future you know like what i see what's gonna happen or what i could see happen is where in the future the game console is no longer existent but what happens is like you can buy a vr set instead of a a console you know what i yeah. mean yeah just buy an oculus rift yeah but do you really want all that data, like, like wi fiing into your brain? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> you got to think of it that way, too. Like, I don't know if I want, like, all that Wi-Fi data just kind of flowing. Like, gigs of data, like, interrupting my brain waves. <laughs> this can't be healthy, man. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But I, for one, have always been of the adage that console power doesn't sell me it's games what games are going to be on this thing you know what i mean what killer apps right. gonna make me buy it which made me sit out the well, xbox halo. well well halo but but eh, halos it better be one hell of a hell of a halo game. <laughs> you didn't uh, see people crying over the trailer uh, people cried during uh majora's mask man people cried people cry for weird reasons people cried for michael jackson Doug. michael jackson so I don't know. Yeah. I need a good ass game. I need a game to be like, that's a Mike game. And I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> I guess I'm buying this console now. Uh, without being outdone, PlayStation 5 wasn't announced at the Game Award, but they did mm-hmm. announce a game by Gearbox called Godfall, which looked okay. It looked like a, it looked like, to be honest, it looked like a, a uh, Destiny clone, kind of. But they're saying it's going to be a, not a looter shooter, but a looter slicer, a sh- a, a, a slight a, a slicer. <laughs> Get ready for a winter heavy sigh. <sighs> uh, hey, I didn't make the game, man. I'm just reporting on it. Uh, yeah, they had they were really enthusiastic, and Randy Pitchford was nowhere to be found, which is smart. <laughs> Leave that guy out of it. But um, I don't know. It, it didn't look as impressive. As Sinuous, whatever it is now. Yeah. Oh, Blade 2. Look kind of current gen. But maybe uh, I don't, maybe I wasn't running it at 4K. So, but to me, it just didn't look that impressive for the first thing to have a PS5 logo on it. You know, maybe they should have held that. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe they should have held that for another announcement. But um, it looks okay, I guess, if it's fun. Um, I'm kind of, you know, feeling a certain way about Gearbox right now so um i still haven't bought uh borderlands 3 for that reason <laughs> but you were telling me you <laughs> no, never no, bring it up man. I'm no, 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 I'm not. you already aired it out dude <laughs> no i'm not doing it I'm all not right doing... all right that's fine i can take it i was gonna go but you're telling me you don't get what the big deal is <laughs> <laughs> no no okay now you're just lying okay I thought you were gonna bring up something i actually said <laughs> now you're just now you're just trying to throw me you under still the... eat at subway <laughs> <laughs> i still eat at subway yeah. i don't get what the big deal is yeah. i still i still eat at papa john's <laughs> what did papa john's do oh geez what did, didn't he do man why do you think he's not on the boxes anymore <laughs> I've never been to Papa John. Papa John's did some dirt. Though. <laughs> He's, he has some strong opinions. Uh, let me just crunch through this fighting game news real quick for yeah. my fighting game heads. Uh, or I'll take an Ambien. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you already took one, my man. Uh, <laughs> well, I, it came my from the pocket Lord of the owner of Gearbox. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, along with his dis- <laughs> along with his memory stick, man. Uh, <laughs> let's stuff on it. Mortal Kombat 11 is getting crossplay. That's awesome. Mortal Kombat 11 is get, has gotten crossplay, so your PlayStation 4 fans can play with Xbox fans, which can play with uh, PC fans. That's nothing but good stuff. So um, let's get let's go out there and get it, MK11 players. Uh, boss Seth got a gender swap for Street Fighter 5, 
Seth was the boss of Street Fighter Four. Uh, he's brought back, but now as a lady. Thanks, Obama. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Winter uh, Trash Monk the Third. It's a joke. We joke around. The We're podcast. jokesters, man. Yeah. Uh, also, news for me. Uh, Outer Worlds is getting DLC. We were recently talking about this. Apparently, Obsidian reveals that Outer Worlds is getting DLC in 2020. So, yay. More Outer Worlds for Mike G. Uh, movie news. Uh, Marvel TV has officially been closed down. Uh, all remaining shows are just going right to Marvel Studios slash Disney Plus. So, what does this mean? This pretty much means it's it's the final nail in the coffin of all of the ABC stuff, which includes um, Runaways, which includes um, Agents of Shield. And it's just the final nail in the coffin of all the Netflix stuff, uh, which is Defenders, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, things we already known, but there were still some shows lingering out there. Like I think Runaways is in its final season, but yeah, yeah all of those productions have shut down. So Disney's taking all their toys and bringing them back into the box so they can start to officially promote their Disney Plus Marvel shows like Falcon and Captain America and She-Hulk and stuff. Fleep and Florp. Watch Fleep and Florp go bippity bop. <laughs> bippity bop on Disney Splurt. Yeah. Uh, Rob Schneider is the Black Widow. <laughs> Rob Schneider is the Cucumber. Here's one for winter. There's a speculation that Disney could eventually buy the WWE. <laughs> yes, so I looked into this, by the way. <laughs> I knew you would. That's why I put it on the back. <laughs> I there knew was just, you the wrong way. So far, there's just one guy. That oh, it's, it's a one guy? It's a one guy saying it? And it's oh, a no, wrestler no. named Ryback. <laughs> shut up. Ryback said it. Shut, yes. shut, shut your mouth. So, I will stand firmly on the side of false right <laughs> false. i didn't know ryback said it dude ryback Mike hates G the wwe while eating a turkey bacon club from subway <laughs> we'll stand with ryback <laughs> fact checking will ruin this podcast i didn't know ryback was the one who put this out there too yes like that's horrible okay right. I, I regret putting this on the docket perhaps what a, if I was going to go, which superstar is doing the most steroids? It would be would Ryback, go, Doug. What, Ryback's whole persona was about how he was a beast. Feed me Feed. more. Yeah. Feed me more, Doug. Yes. Now, if it was someone named, like, if it was Rhino, though, I would I would go, okay, Rhino's got, a, got some uh Got, got some, some clout? You got yeah, some clout, clout. Doug? Yeah. <laughs> right back, Doug. He he infamously hates Vince McMahon and everything WWE. Yeah, so yeah. It, this coming from him is yeah. actually kind of the worst. <laughs> like but, it's, so, it's such BS. Yeah. But we can still talk about like we can speculate on what it would be like for Disney to own. Okay, WWE. I just have one question. Yeah, who is the Disney princess of WWE? Oh. Well, it would be Stephanie McMahon. Oh, geez, Vince that's horrible. Her. Vince already trashed her in the early days. Yeah. Uh, Becky yeah. Lynch? Becky Lynch? <laughs> is, she, is she the princess? No, you would have to make a belt where... Yeah, you have to make a Disney belt. <laughs> yeah. I am the Disney princess! I am the Disney princess! <laughs> it ends up being like uh, the Disney princess is Triple H. <laughs> yeah. I am the Disney princess! <laughs> yeah. It's me! The- now, <laughs> I would like to see, like, if this happened, that would mean Disney Plus would absorb uh, WWE, the WWE Network. Yeah. yeah. So then Disney just becomes, like, starts, keeps eating more and more uh, of the feed competition. Me, yeah. Feed me more. Though. Yeah. And <laughs> I would, I would totally be down for, I mean, there's nothing in my mind that would say WWE shouldn't be bought by Disney. Dude. WWE, they're like, they're, they they do the same shenanigans, dude. It's the end of episode nine. Ray mm-hmm. and the group have defeated uh, Kylo Ren, and they're having the celebration, a la uh, a Return of the Jedi. And out from the they're shadows, nobody. walks. They sold nobody. you for drinking money. They sold you for drinking money. Yeah. Your family are a bunch of from a junker town. They're a bunch uh, of degenerates. <laughs> uh, from the shadows walks a cloaked figure that looks like a Sith. 
Yeah. He pulls the the head back, and it's just the Undertaker <laughs> with glowing oh, red eyes. Yeah. Oh, you hear the squeak of his, his metallic oh, knees. <laughs> you hear the, squeak, cheek, the cheek, squint cheek. of his metallic knees. <laughs> <laughs> His knees are his knees are powered by the forest stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look. I, to be honest, I I, I, I could see because you know uh, there's also total nonstop action that used to have in Universal Studios, I believe. Um, yeah. The uh, what is it? Uh, you can go there and watch a show like a uh, professional wrestling. I, that would make me go to to Disneyland more. <laughs> they just have wrestling I've only, matches. I have, I've never been to Disneyland. If you if you you could promise me that there's going to be WWE there. Yeah, I'll make sure. I'll make sure that Becky that uh that um all the superstars, all the WWE superstars are there like uh like not unto AJ Styles uh, in in Roman yeah. Reigns. Roman Reigns is in Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> as, as Roman Reigns. <laughs> or Evolution, you get Ric Flair, Batista, and Randy Orton. Evolution is Evolution. a mystery! Dude, they're going into Moss Eisley and they just see Degeneration X in the back doing crotch shots. <laughs> Horrible news. Still have, they'll have Motorhead do it. Well, never mind. They're 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 no, they can't do that. Unless they're doing it from the other side of the forest, Doug. Uh, Quentin Tarantino says he, he is not going to he he is not going to let his tenth and final movie be a Star Trek film. Oh, good call. I guess, but he could Quentin still write it. <laughs> he could still write it and have he somebody true else write it, man. He could super true lies it. Ha, ha, thank you for mentioning true lies, uh, true uh, romance on this oh, yeah, podcast. True <laughs> yeah, true romance. Yeah. I love True Romance. It's actually my second favorite uh, Tarantino film. Is that um, the one where um, there's like a um, name name the actress in it? Uh, Patricia Arquette. Patricia Arquette. What's the movie I'm thinking of? That Arnold Schwarzenegger and there's a dance. And that's then... True Lies <laughs> with Jamie Lee Curtis. They're completely different movies, my man. <laughs> okay, okay, but yeah, <laughs> you knew where I was going. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. True Romance, dude, with. Uh... With Patricia Arquette and and Ga- Gandolfini, what's his face, and Val Kilmer as Elvis, Doug. Who's real? Gandolfini. I Gandolfini. can't do it. Gandolfini. Gandolfini. So Quentin Tarantino is Camilla. Saying, <laughs> Camilla is saying like, yeah, I'm thinking about it, and I told myself I would only do ten movies ever, and then I'm just going to retire, and I don't yeah. want my tenth and final movies being a, like a cash grab. So I want to do what I want to do. <laughs> I'm going to do a story. Marvel movie. Yeah, <laughs> he does he directs he directs a uh, uh, blade oh that would be sick actually a quentin yeah. Tarant- but no the n-word will be thrown around way too much you will feel too comfortable and, and blade's feet will be in every other shot it would just be a horrible movie yeah what you did can't you do blade say? blade's feet will be <laughs> blade's feet will be in every shot of the film on some level he'll do kicks without boots uh, it'll just be his toes wiggling in 3d and Quentin will be very much appreciative <laughs> of the filming opportunity. Yeah. It's Have so him do great. Star Wars. <laughs> now on to Star Wars, now that we're done talking about Blade's toes. Catherine Kennedy is saying that they're going to be moving beyond the trilogy format into Swift the New quadrilogy. Territory. The <laughs> quadrilogy. The Quinn trilogy. Yeah. What makes more money? This is a horrible idea. <laughs> I don't. Hey, stop it. <laughs> this is a horrible idea. Why? Because Star Wars is branded by its trilogy. There always should be numbered <laughs> Star Wars forever. It's branded by the trilogy. You know it's the important Star Wars movie because it's an episode. Oh my goodness. It could still be episodes, but I I'm I'm biased where I would go I could stand having a Star Wars movie every year uh... having multiple Star Wars TV shows. The, to the point where I don't have to watch reruns or the Clone Wars. And I, yeah, so I'm the wrong person to ask whether it's bad or not. Every but you trilogy should be a generation. No! Every trilogy should be a genera- a generation of Star Wars storytelling. Okay, I, I, I see where you're coming from, 
but no, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait another but generation. You're gonna, have, you're gonna have tons of movies. No, I'm not saying another. I like, wait a whole generation. I'm saying yeah. it's to tell the story of another generation. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Not like oh no, oh well, episode nine's done. We gotta wait another twenty years before ten, eleven, and twelve. Like no, like just tell a different story of another generation of characters. Well, I'm saying that so. I like what the what they were originally doing, which was like an episode every other year, and in between there was going to be like an offshoot. Movie. That's fine. I'm okay with that. That would but, be awesome. Yeah, that's we fine. Could. We all agree, uh, and that would happen to the end of time. <laughs> Until the end of time, episode four, yeah. episode one hundred and three. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But episodic Star Wars is it's iconic, man. Like there has to be episode episodic Star Wars films. But they're still man. having the episodic, but there's no longer going to be trilogy. Ah, uh, still, but trilogies wrap things up so nicely, though. A trilogy but wraps it, it up a story people, so nicely. But it puts people in the awkward position of going, "Okay, we know we have to make three films, so so why don't you just organize your film, your storytelling to accommodate three movies? It's not rocket science, man. <sighs> man, just write a complete story before you film the first one." <laughs> Okay. So that it just so it okay, spreads we're, we're out. We're falling into the trap of going. We can figure out a way to fix Star Wars. Okay, like, that's its own conversation. I'm just is. saying that uh, that abandoning the trilogy format may not be the smartest idea. That's my stance. I'm just, I'm saying, just saying any idea they come up with, it's not going to make us happy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Star Wars, but fans. it will make me happy because I love all things Star Wars. I'm I'm tempted to go through the prequels series and uh, yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, or no, I I have to watch Star Trek, Cone, not Star Trek, uh, Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Re- Rebels. Well, don't watch the CG sto- Clone Wars. Watch the cartoon Clone Wars with the guy who did Samurai Jack. Well, Forgot about that one, didn't you? Yeah. I, I don't that think too. that one's canon anymore. None of it's canon anymore. It is canon. <laughs> it is canon. You know, none of it's canon anymore. It is canon. The Clone Wars is canon. So is Star Fine. Wars Rebels. Fine. It's just that the Gendy or Organovsky episodes are way better done, in my opinion, than the CG stuff. There's no, uh, there's no Ahsoka, so it's instantly better. <laughs> I just listened to someone describe how George Lucas looked at things as canon and non-canon. Are you ready for this? Yes, please. So he used a Trinity analogy, <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh my goodness, this is already horrible. <laughs> Where he's the father. <laughs> Anyone who he blesses in the Star Wars universe is the son. So it would be. Uh, what does that even war. mean? So anyone that has gone and like bend the knee to him and go like, can we make the Clone Wars TV show? <laughs> I think. What is he? The Star Wars Pope? You have to kiss the ring. <laughs> and, hold on, and then the Holy Ghost is like all the books, all the things that are like, man, it's out there, Meh. but he hasn't necessarily blessed. So let me get this straight. George <laughs> I Lucas... heard this by the, This is on the You Made It Weird podcast with Seth Green that I heard this from. So, and this is all in Lucas's brain, right? Lucas, Lucas is the father of all things Star Wars, right? It was in his brain till Not, till someone figured it out. He till <laughs> no, he told till he told somebody that this is how he described it back when he was in control. Okay, the the son is any production that comes and humbly asks him to. Add this to the mythos, and yes. only through his blessing. The reason why I say the, the Clone Wars is because the, that show. I mean, they're going to make another season, so it has that connection of being. But it, it uh, a, a Star Wars show in the con- when Star Wars is in control of Disney, as well as when this it was just so George dumb. Lucas in control. So he he has worked <laughs> with George Lucas, sort of thing. And I, George Lucas like, I he the the. The aliens should do this. The, the whales. It should be the whales. Like no one wants to do this, George. But the whales. I'm trying so hard not to keep naming episodes after Star Wars stuff, but this is the this dumbest thing I've ever heard. With red tails. Oh my god! <laughs> and, did you know that American Graffiti took place in the Star Wars universe? <laughs> Duh. Duh. I can't with any of that. Are we the Holy Spirit? The ones who uh, keep 
keep the mythos going? No. The, As influencers? The pretty much, I think what he's trying to get at, like anything that is not like, if we're going to use a compare today, anything that was in the expanded universe. Is the Holy Spirit? Is the so, Holy Ghost. So the Jedi twins, Mira Jade, all that stuff? Right. Oh, jeez. Like a lot of, I the person, Seth Green specifically said the books. <laughs> what do you guys know about the Jedi twins, Doug? You guys know about Jedi twins? Twins. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh. yeah. What are, you, what are you looking forward to this week, man? <laughs> Another Mandalorian episode coming out this Ooh. week. And watching some more Nosferatu <laughs> and uh, a week and a half off of w- w- work. So whoa, 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 whoa. buying some bang energy drinks, probably playing Modern Warfare. Have the game crash on me. Dude, he is such a gamer, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm my see my poison is rock star, so I'm gonna buy a bunch of rock star, eat a pizza that I'm gonna then pour the rock star on top of to give it more power. Yeah. Um, I have no TV to watch right now. I'm so oh, The Witcher starts this week, so I'm super hyped to watch The Witcher on Netflix. So I'm probably gonna, I'm probably going to marathon that over the whole weekend. So I'm really looking forward to that. No games to be played. I failed recess because I play no games. Uh, and I may go see episode nine sometime before the end of the weekend, just to say I saw it so I don't get spoiled. And I may have some opinions on that for our Christmas cast. But just to guys let you know, the Christmas cast is going to be very Christmas centric. So get hype for our Christmas talk with Winter and Mike G. With Little Snake Nick. Yeah. Ooh. In the origins. Merry Christmas, yeah. Christmas comes each time each oh, yeah. year. Uh, any passing thoughts before we close this bad boy out? Yeah, once again, thank you to Ozzy Austin for the gift. Oh, that was a loud noise. That right was there. fine. That's <laughs> and, fine. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if this guy also listens to the podcast, but there's a, name, a guy by the name of Steve who uh, gave me some Sharks uh, memorabilia that I purchased a couple months ago, but he finally made it and brought it my way. Some unique fandom there. Uh, it's Sharks. a Christmas miracle. Yeah, Sharks play tonight. Go and Sharks. just to remember, oh, well, this is a different attitude that you have toward the Sharks. Rangers. <laughs> you know what talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I'm I'm still playing Slay the Spire. Sweet. Yes, uh, check out our episodes of Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast on our website, mastersofnerdiversecast.com. Um, me, Mike G, recently did a guest uh, episode on Altered Universe podcast, so please check that out. And our own Oz, Austin Ozzy actually put up the first episode of our D&D campaign. Mm-hmm. So please check that out as well. We're having a blast playing that, so just keep following up with those episodes, and you'll be able to follow us on our D&D adventure. Um, mm-hmm. You can also follow us on Twitter, that is at MNerdiverse, where we do our polls, we interact with the community, and have an overall good time. I've, of course, been your host, Mike G. And I've been your host, Trash Monk the Third. And we will always ask you to take that one step beyond. <laughs>